Can the lion hurt? Oh, yes. You want to test out? Get into the cage of a roaring lion. Get into a cage of a lion. See what happens. It says, it says he's looking for someone to devour. That implies he can devour. It implies. But there's something important here to understand it. Very important to put this together. A roaring lion looking to devour. That in itself is filled with a profound key. A lion that is going to devour you does not have to roar. In fact, usually a lion will not roar. When lions hunt, they don't roar. They don't roar while they're getting ready because they would scare away their prey. So when they are coming to devour, they will sneak up, which the enemy does too. But what is the, but so why is it saying it's a roaring lion seeking to devour? A lion will roar when it wants to warn you or say, get away, or say, hey, I'm king, or when it gets up in the morning. They say it roars when it gets up in the morning, which some of you do too. But if, <laughs> so it's making a show. So why is that the case? So how do you put it together, the enemy roaring and seeking to devour? What does it mean? If he's roaring, it means that there is a bluff involved because he's trying to make something appear a certain way. The roar, if he's trying to devour, he should not be roaring. But if he's roaring, it means he's roaring for the power he does not have. And yet he's trying to use the roar to lead to your devouring. You get it? He roars because of what he does not have. But he's using that bluff as a weapon to destroy you. If you believe him, then you can be destroyed. If you do not believe him, he cannot touch you. The key is, see, it's unlike in nature when the roar says back off. The enemy is using the roar to make you panic and to get your eyes off the Lord. That's his power. He doesn't have a real power. See, God has power. God is almighty. If he's almighty, what's left? What's left? So the, what about evil, though? Evil exists. Evil is a false power. It is based on a negative thing. It is not a real power. It's based on a twisting. So the enemy, for what he does not have, will always he can make the appearance of power. If they believe the roar, you're defeated if you believe the roar. If you freeze, if you, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you freeze up, you get discouraged. He's trying to do that to you. He's trying to make you forget who you are in God. Evil. It is a false power that cannot touch the good, but if you honor it, the enemy therefore tries to make you panic. Panic. Because if you panic, you're going to sin. If you panic, you're going to mess up. If you panic, you're going to lose sight of God. If you panic, you're not going to stand in faith. The enemy is always trying to make you panic. Turn to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 32. A real deadly situation. 2 Chronicles 32. Hezekiah, Sennacherib. Hezekiah is in Jerusalem. And he is surrounded by this army of Assyria, which is the deadliest, most ferocious, most terrorizing army in the world. They are deadly. They mutilate people. And verse 9. After this, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent his servants to Jerusalem while he was besieging Lachish with all his force with him against Hezekiah, king of Judah, and against all Judah who were at Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, On what are you trusting that you are remaining in Jerusalem under siege? Is not Hezekiah misleading you to give yourselves over to die by hunger and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria? 
Has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars and said to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before one altar, you shall burn incense? Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of the lands? Were the gods of the nations of the lands able at all to deliver their hand from my hand? Who was there among all the gods of the nations which my fathers utterly destroyed who could deliver his people out of my hand? That your God should be able to deliver you from my hand. Whoa. Who's that talking? That's Satan talking. That's how he talks. That's how he talks. First of all, he twists everything around. Do you notice he totally twisted around? He said that Hezekiah took away the altars of God. Hezekiah took away the altars of the false gods. And then he goes against that and he says, How can you can't trust? You can't trust God, you have to panic. You can't trust God to take care of you. You can't trust God to take care of your finances. Panic. You can't trust God to take care of your well-being. You have to go some other way. Do it my way. Panic. Give in. Give in to me. He's saying already. You're not going to be happy. Give in to the sin. It's all you got. That's what Satan says. He's roaring. So much of sin is linked to panic. Panic. Even the word is ungodly. Panic. Pan. So when you're fighting the enemy, when the enemy fights you, which he does, the first key, do not panic. Do not panic. He says, when you get mad, count to ten. Well, when you're about to panic in the Lord, you hear something, the enemy doesn't. Stop. Count to ten. Get with God. Get with God. Be very slow to believe a bad report. The enemy attacks by giving bad reports. Bad reports. Bad, everything's going around. Your whole life is falling apart. It's not falling apart. God is with me. How can I fall apart? I mean, these things have fall, but my life can't. It can even be he can give you a dream. That is, it is a dream. It doesn't mean it's of the Lord. And you can be all bent out of shape, and it doesn't mean it's the Lord. can even be a vision. can be a dream. You see, ultimately, for a believer, there is no ultimate bad report. There are little bad reports, but they're ultimately backed up by a good report. Whatever happens, well, the end of it is good. So even Job's bad reports, you know, at the end of it was good. So there's really no ultimate bad report. The, the worst thing that can happen is heaven. So that's the report at the end. Whatever the end of every bad report is heaven. So that's the worst, the worst that goes. You know, I mean, Job is there, you know, to, you know, all of a sudden, hey, Job, you know, your, your, uh, your cattle are gone now. Your wealth is gone. Everything, you just lost everything. You're bankrupt. You're gone. Now, sometimes, oh, and by the way, you know, just, just, you know, you know your, your kids were having a birthday party. You know, everything fell in. They're all dead. The wife says, why don't you just curse God and die? You know, they definitely needed marriage counseling because that's not the way you do it. <laughs> the enemy is trying to make Job do what he would normally never do by a bad report. So whatever the case is, be slow to believe. Be try, you know, believe the best in God. And even if things, even if there's bad reports, the ultimate end of it is good for you. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts or get in touch, go to hopeoftheworld.org or call toll free 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821. You can also get more at Jonathan Kahn's Facebook page or write us direct at Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA.